Hey guys, it's Ryan Caseman from Canadian Freedom Files coming to you on YouTube. This is episode 4. I uh, hope you've enjoyed episode 3, the one I did on snakes versus isopods. Uh, actually, not versus some snakes and isopods. Um, if you like either one of those, go check it out. Um, today's topic I'd like to cover uh, is on sexing snakes. It's an age old question that has plagued anyone who's had snakes at some point, either if you're just a keeper or a breeder even. Um, <clears throat> by the way, before I move on to that topic, so if you haven't hit subscribe yet, please hit subscribe. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, let me convince you to do that by the end of this video. So anyways, moving on to actually sexing snakes. Now, how do we sex snakes? There are various techniques, there are various methods, I'm gonna to try to cover as many of them as much, as in depth as possible, as comprehensively as possible. Um, we're talking from tapering, visual IDing, uh, to sexual size differences, sexual dimorphism in size, um, the spurs, there's appendages, yes, appendages. Um, there's also the techniques you can use like popping, speed bumping, and probing. So I'll cover the first four in this video, the visual, ones the more by looking at the tapering of the tail and spurs uh, appendages and so on so and I'll, I'll go over the speed bumping and popping and probing in another video just because it's a little more invasive and it, it has more chance of injuring the animal so it just needs its own video thing so <clears throat> anyway so without further ado let's just go look at the first topic here uh first method of, of uh, sexually, sexually IDing your snakes <laughs> Visual tapering. So here's my albina house snake, cape house snake, female. Um, and I want to show you guys, she's a, uh, what, she's 2015 animal, so she's going to be four this summer. But uh, just looking at that tail that you can kind of see, now this is where the cloaca is. And in a male snake, they'll have the hemipenes lying on either side of past this cloaca here. You vert it backwards, right? Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> um, but you can see the overall now the tail has a nice even taper. There's a little bit of thickness in here, um, but sometimes you'll see that with females that will actually have store, uh, that actually fed well, they'll actually store a little bit of fat deposit down in there. Uh, you'll see that with wild snakes too. It's not, that's usually where it starts. Females, um, fat deposits in uh, snakes tend to start towards the end of the, uh, end of, towards the ends of the animal, um, not the front. But uh, anyways, you'll see the taper, it's a nice even taper. And I'm gonna show you my male. So it's just only a year younger um, and the, the difference in, in his tail so you can see also over here you'll see a little bit of a bump it goes right down like there's no hemipenes lying here that keeps the height almost parallel and you'll see that in my male so here's my male house snake uh, if you want to get a little closer down here i can show the tail because he's a smaller guy i'm gonna take that one last the camera um, you can see that tail. Now, notice how his tail keeps going um, compared to my female. Yes, his overall size is smaller, but you'll see just in proportion to that vent. His tail is a lot longer. You'll see now, you can see the thickness on the sides here that actually are more even and parallel for a lot longer than the female. Now, it's even more pronounced when you look at him on the side. Now here you can see where the vent is, you know how the female kind of dips down after that, look at him, but he's packing. <laughs> but, uh, so you can see that, and that's a pretty good indicator for a male, and, and, and it's pretty, a lot more pronounced in um, African house snakes too. Right buddy? Yeah, you a third. <laughs> so there you go. So there you have, you can see how visually, sec um, why do I keep saying that word? <laughs> is this going to be a thing in this video that I'm going to have to like? <laughs> Uh, so, so you can see now how visually you can you can actually see the tail taper to kind of get a guess uh, what sex your snake could be. You see also because of the size differences and age that how that can be really tricky to do that also. So um, another visual cue you can use, and this happens in the two families of snakes, that's pythons, pythons and boas, <clears throat> is spurs. Pythons and boas have spurs that are basically vestigial limbs. That's what's the remnant of the ancestor that used to have legs. Uh, they still have pelvic girdle and spurs left, and that's why we call them the more primitive snakes. Um, 
in present day pythons and boas, we see those things being used, the spurs being used as courtship tools during torture, during mating behavior. Uh, and we'll look at um, some examples of that because I do have two pythons, my two lovely girls, Bertha and Elsa, to help me in this video. So let's check that video out. So here are my lovely assistants here to show the spurs and pythons because they're literally the only pythons I own. <laughs> Um, I don't have any bows to even show anything, but my two lovely girls, Bertha and Elsa, uh, mom and daughter duo, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with the python spurs. Now, you'll see these, you see my finger can almost pick that up, out. I don't know if you can see my finger doing that, but uh, that's uh, the vestigial spurs that pythons have. Now, Bertha and Elsa uh, probe females, that means they are Actually, Bertha here, Big Bertha here, yeah. is my proven female, of course, because she had a daughter. So you can see why spurs in pythons. Where are you guys going? Go back here. Um, are not the best, the most reliable way because Bertha. Now you can see Bertha barely has any, so she, you know, could pass. But then again, all of a sudden, look over here. Now she's got this little thing. Now, of course, male. Ball pythons and uh, and will have more pronounced ones, but you can also have an exception where you have females will actually show some longer than others too. So there's always the exceptions that if you've had enough experience with ball pythons, you'll know that that's not the most reliable method either. So, so you've seen examples of that in pythons. Um, the only um, species that I wish I could show you that would actually is. As far as I know, 100% accurate is Candoya. I don't work with any Candoya, I don't know why. It kills me. I love Bifobovids. But, uh, and the whole genus. But they're very interesting um, Pacific Island boas. The males are, are the only ones that actually have spurs. Females actually tend to have a little bit of a kind of a nub in there. That's all it is. It's nothing really that looks really misshapen or sticking out or you can really you know, stick with your nail or anything like that. Male. Candoria will have that. Me and Candoria also have the size difference going for them also. They, they're really small animals, like the average, some species average, like the pulse and I will average about 18 inches to two feet, while females will usually get to four feet. So you have, they also have that going for them, which also brings me to the next topic in sexual dimorphism in snakes is the adult sizes. Uh, you also have house snakes, for example. I have house snakes I work with, some people work with rosy boas, um, garter snakes are also like that, where you'll see, you'll see that the male tend to have a lot smaller final sizes, final adult sizes, maturing, maturing sizes than females do. Females tend to sometimes be triple the sizes or sometimes double the length of them, but just the weight-wise, it's just the stark difference, is, it's crazy. I'm, I'm sure um, if you've seen garter snakes or, or seen videos of mating balls and garter snakes, of garter snakes, I didn't say garden snakes, but if you've seen videos like that, you'd know that uh, that males are a lot smaller. Uh, you also see the reversal of that in, uh, for example, rattlesnakes, where you'll see males tend to be the bigger ones because they tend to use the size in combat. Uh, some cobra species, I think, too, and uh, king snakes that I work with also. So, well, um, I'll show you a couple of uh, videos here quickly of just what uh, that might be with size differences. For uh, I'll pull out a couple of my king snakes here and show them to you. Here's my big boy, Julius. He is uh, integrate actually locality of king snakes that found the central peninsula area of Florida and Fernando County, Florida actually. But you'll see his size. He's the exact same age. In fact, he actually just came out of brumation, so he's kind of a little slow. I'm not going to mess with him too much here. But just to give you an idea of the size here, I'm going to take a female out here to show you the size difference with the king snakes. So here's my female Hernando County king snake. And uh, you can see in the tub, quite a bit small. I'll take the both of them out, but she doesn't really stretch out as much as she, the other boy does. It's not much of a difference, but it's enough. I mean, these are the best examples because I think this female is actually pretty big for a female to begin with. So I think. That's why I wanted to show you guys the difference. It's a subtle difference. Um, some species have it more um, 
have a bigger difference like you've seen in the house snakes, but uh, king snakes also do that, do that. So of course, the fall with that method of using adult size is if you don't actually know the age of the animal. If you're actually guessing with age, you kind of have a ballpark idea. Um, you don't know how the animal has been raised before. In the wild, it's also hard to gauge because some populations, I mean, the food abundance might create bigger animals. The type of prey they eat might produce bigger animals. So a female from this area might still be um, smaller or bigger, depending on where the sexual dimorphism is. In another area, maybe based on food abundance. So it's it's a, also a kind of a tricky thing to use as a definite way to sex, especially when you're just holding one snake in your hand and you won't have a clue of being able to do that. So. Um, another one is uh, appendages I like to talk about, and this is really based on only one genus of snakes. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have heard the genus Langahed, or also known as Malagasy leaf nose snakes. They're really cool, interesting little colub colubrid, um, arboreal colubrid that's in Madagascar, of course, uh, that are born with sexually dimorphic nasal appendages. Yes, I say appendages again. Uh, the males have a slender, long, pointy snout, and females actually have a serrated edge in the bottom. And, and it's kind of cute. I've seen uh, there's an article actually um, I, I found that um, shows how they just like rhino rats, they actually born with the appendage actually folded back, so their egg tooth actually can slice the egg as they come out. And when they come out, they actually born with a the appendage pointing backwards, it's kind of cute and funny. But, uh, so that's kind of neat. Um, I'll show you some Google pictures here. Uh, disclaimer, they are all Google pictures uh, to show what I'm talking about with Langaha. So there you have it guys, a quick look at some neat species and the sexual dimorphism in them um, as much as I can, co I can cover. If I missed anything and if you know about something cool about a, a certain species that you know of or that you work with, please let me know, um, get a hold of me in all the various ways. Um, leave in the comments especially so that other people can also learn from it. And by the way, if you like what you've been listening to in the background here, my homeboys in the Belgian, show them some love, intense grindcore from Lethbridge, <sighs> just kill the stuff. I don't want to make excuses for what I play in this videos, guys. Um, I love my underground scene. It's going to be underground all the time. I also love the, 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 those of you that actually been sending me videos of your underground bands. That's awesome. I love that stuff. Um, if you don't like the music, please just turn the audio off. I got closed captioning anyways. You're good. You're golden, right? Everyone is happy then. Um, also, yeah, I'm rocking about it. I had to do the water paint just because bringing the old school back guys. Anyways. Um, Thanks for watching this far and putting up with me. Uh, please tune in next week. I'm gonna cover snakes coming out of rumation here. It's gonna be a crazy weekend here. We actually got guys coming out. Um, so I'll cover that. And I'll also be doing a video, part two to this video, um, covering the popping, uh, popping. <laughs> what is popping and probing? Popping, popping and probing and speed bumping in, a, in the part two of this video too. So. Um, please hit subscribe if you like what you've been listening to, um, spread the love, share, and until next time guys, stay cool, my hour or whatever, I ah, Alright, see you guys, bye. <laughs>